These mass graves in Maikadra in northern Ethiopia unearth what the UN says could be war crimes committed in the Tigray conflict. A joint Ethiopian and UN human rights investigation says rebels from Tigray killed more than 200 ethnic Amharas here in November last year. The conflict has now expanded well beyond Tigray into neighboring Amhara and Afar regions. And it's been devastating for civilians. The UN report found in the year-long war, Eritrean soldiers who backed Ethiopia's federal army, as well as Ethiopian government soldiers and Tigrayan rebels, have committed widespread crimes, including rape, torture and killings of civilians. All parties to the Tigray conflict have committed violations of international human rights, humanitarian and refugee law. Some of this may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Ethiopia's government has largely welcomed the report while expressing its serious reservations about aspects of the findings. It's promised to set up a task force to investigate the allegations. While rebels in Tigray said the report is flawed, citing the involvement of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. But on the ground, the conflict is intensifying. Tigran rebels say they have captured two northern towns on a major highway leading to the capital, Addis Ababa. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has urged Ethiopians to unite and fight against the rebels and has warned that attempts to make Ethiopia like Libya and Syria will not succeed. Abiy Ahmed, who was re-elected in a landslide victory in June, is facing mounting pressure to end the war from Ethiopia's largest humanitarian aid donor, the United States. As the war approaches its one-year anniversary, the United States and others cannot continue business as usual relations with the government of, Eth of Ethiopia. The extraordinary partnership we have enjoyed is not sustainable while the military conflict continues to expand threatening the stability and the unity of one of Africa's most influential countries. The Biden administration has suspended Ethiopia from a crucial trade agreement with the U.S. A very significant uh, decision by the United States. It is important to understand that it hasn't happened yet. In other words, there's a, July, there's a January 1 date at which it may become effective uh, if there is no movement towards peace uh, in Ethiopia. And if that happens, uh, I think Ethiopia is uh, likely to lose about a quarter of a billion dollars. And that could mean more hardship for Ethiopians. The UN investigation only looked into reports of abuse until late June, when the rebels regained much of Tigray. It does not include any attacks or civilian abuse since then. Priyanka Gupta, Al Jazeera. Let's go live now to Samuel Gerichu, who's in Addis Ababa. Uh, Samuel, first off, what should we make of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's response to this UN-led uh, report, which has found serious human rights violations, some potentially constituting war crimes? Well, uh, to begin with, it's the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission is part of uh, the Ethiopian government. It's a government agency. Uh, they, the head has been saying that they really want to investigate more. They, they don't have uh, the resources to do so. Uh, it's the, to the credit of the UN that uh, took uh, the Ethiopian uh, Human Rights Commission as a partner. But again, the Ethiopian side hasn't said much. But the allegation stands that all actors, including Ethiopia, Eritrea and the TPLF, uh, stand accused of some of the worst vi uh, human rights violations in the history of this troubled nation. Even by Ethiopian standards, it's very troubling. Talk to me about the latest developments uh, on the ground there. How serious is an escalation, what we're seeing now with the TPLF taking towns, uh, it says, which are on the road to the capital? Well, Ethiopia hasn't really acknowledged the fact that TPLF has taken over uh, Kambolcha, an important uh, city, and uh, Desi. Uh, but the fact that uh, local government is telling residents to register their weapons and defend their neighborhoods uh, makes you believe that uh, there's something happening that the government hasn't spoken of, uh, that the TPLF remain to be a threat. The prime minister spoke uh, to his ministers yesterday, highlighting the fact, according to him, according to his perspective, that the TPLF is a terrorist organization that needs to be defeated. Uh, but uh, here we are, uh, and people are shell-shocked 
by the fast-changing environment of uh, Ethiopia. The U.S. Embassy has told its residents to leave Ethiopia because of this. We know that the uh, TPLF has allied with other uh, armed groups, with other fighters. How has the TPLF and its allies been able to make these sorts of gains? Well, um, the historical fact is the OLA, the Oromo Liberation Front, which half of the leadership is, uh, one of them is a minister, a senior minister inside uh, Prime Minister Abiy's government. Uh, they fought the TPLF for 27 years and accused them of all kinds of violations, including human rights and lack of democracy. And for them to find a common enemy by itself is a milestone. Um, but how long that relationship will stand is an open uh, debate. All right, thank you for that update there. Samuel, get it you and Ari Sababa for us.